Assalamu alaikum. Our lecture today is about uh, BID. What is BID? BID it is defined as Pelvic Inflammatory Disorder, which is defined as infection of the upper genital tract, which is include the cervix, uterus, fallopian tube, and both ovaries. While the infection that involve the vagina and vulva, we call it the lower genital tract infection. What is the causes or etiology? It is the most commonly caused by ascending infection from the endocervix or may occur from the descending organ, such as the appendix. The most common organism are chlamydia and gonococcus, but anaerobes also involve. What is the pathophysiology? If the patient gets the infection, what could be occurred to her? Once the infection has ascended to the uterus, the fallopian tubes are commonly damaged. And the most important thing is that fallopian tubes are commonly damaged. There is inflammation of the mucosa, which if progressive, will destroy the cilia. As we know, the cilia is very important because it is transport to the ova, followed by scarring in the lumen. And this can cause pocketing with partial obstruction of the tube. And this may predispose to what we call ectopic pregnancy. As we know, ectopic pregnancy is plantation of the embryo outside the uterine cavity. So by this mechanism, may lead to ectopic pregnancy. So the first complication of pelvic inflammatory disease is ectopic pregnancy. In severe infection, a mucopurulent discharge exudes through the femporeal end, causing peritoneal inflammation, scarring, and adhesion formation. So the second compli complication is scarring and adhesion formation. It can affect the ovary, and form what we call it tubo ovarian abscess. So the next complication is what we call it tubo ovarian abscess. Infections are usually contained by, contained by omentum, causing what we call it omental adhesion. El gono chlamydia trachomatosis and el gonococcus can cause very hepatitis leading to adhesion between the liver and peritoneum. This gives a villain strength appearance at the laparoscopy. And this is called the fetus half cortis syndrome. So th this is the third complication of the ID. What is the risk factor? The risk factor for developing BID whenever the patient, her age is below 25. If she has a previous history of STD, if she got an intrauterine contraceptive device. Multiple sexual partners we got as a risk factor. JOB, termination of pregnancy. After doing hysterosalbangiogram, this is also a risk factor. Intra vitro IVF, in vitro fertilization, also a risk factor for development of the ID. Postpartum endometritis and bacterial vaginosis. All these factors lead to development with BID. Protective factor. Is there is any protective factor? Yes. The use of barrier contraception and varina and combined oral contraceptive pills regard as protective factor against development of BID. What is the sign and symptoms? How is the patient is presented to you? The patient may be at, yani totally asymptomatic, diagnosis during infertility investigation. As we mentioned in the beginning of our lecture, it is due to adhesion and severe adhesion. So the patient may present with infertility for their first time. Secondly, the patient may complain from the lower abdominal pain and dyspareunia. 
abnormal vaginal discharge and an unscheduled vaginal bleeding. So unscheduled vaginal bleeding, نزف غير مبرمج أو نزف في غير وقته. You have to think by BID. Pyrexia more than three thirty-eight degrees centigrade. Cervical excitation and adnexial tenderness. How you are going to investigate the patient with BID? First of all, you have to do endocervical and high vaginal swab. You have to perform white BC and C-reactive protein may be elevated. Ultrasound is important to detect adnexial mass. Fourthly, laparoscope is a gold standard in the diagnosis. How you are going to treat it? How to treat? How you are going to treat? What is the treatment of the ID? Rest is advice. You have to do VT. Is done to rule out ectopic pregnancy. An IUCD should be removed. Adequate hydration and adequate analgesia. Sexual intercourse should be avoided during treatment. The partner should be treated. Most patients can be treated as outpatient, but inpatient treatment may be indicated. So all, yeah, most of patients, you can treat them outpatient, but there is certain indication for admission patient with the ID. What surgical cause is not excluded? For example, you think this is the lower abdomen bay related to the appendicitis or cholecystitis or other differential diagnosis. Severe infection and generalized sepsis. The patient is tired. Failure to respond to outpatient treatment. The patient is still fever. Severe pelvic and abdominal pain that requires strong analgesia. Strong analgesia. This is the indication for admission patient. What is the outpatient treatment? Here we give you a multiple regimen because some patients may be sensitized to one drug, some patients may be allergic to one drug, some patients may be resistant. So this is a lot of regimen. You can choose one regimen very enough. You can give your patient oral of loxacine for 100 milligram twice a day together with oral metronidazole for 100 milligram twice a day. This is for 14 days. Very important is to complication, completion the course of a treatment. Not for example, just one week and the patient leave the drugs because this is, may make uh, the treatment more difficult. Resistance of the drugs will be okay. A second regimen, you can use cystatriaxone 250 milligram single dose IM together with oral doxycycline 100 milligram twice a day and oral metronidazole 400 milligram twice a day. Also, this is for 14 days. The patient treatment here, we have to use an injectable route. Ciftatriaxone, two gram IV together with IV or oral doxycycline, 100 milligram twice a day together with IV metronidazole, 500 milligram twice a day. This continue until the patient improve, usually within four, 24 hour. Then changes to the oral drugs for another 14 days. Alternative, you can give a clindamycin, 900 milligram IV three times a day, plus gentamicin IV loading dose, two milligram per kg, followed by one and a half milligram per kg three times a day. Followed by oral of loxacine, 400 milligram twice a day, and oral metranazole, 400 milligram twice a day for 14 days. You can give IV free of loxacine, 400 milligram twice a day, and IV metranazole three times a day. Surgical treatment in form of FC's drainage under ultrasound guidance or by laparoscopy. Advise patient about use barrier contraception and seek early medical advice if she become pregnant due to the risk of ectopic pregnancy. This is regard the BID in general. Now, let's to discuss the causes of BID. For example, chlamydia, meaning the most common organism that causes pelvic inflammatory disease. What is chlamydia? Chlamydia trachomatis is obligate intracellular parasite. It is the commonest STDs, and it is affects the columnar epithelium of the genital tract. There are similar serovirus of chlamydia. 
A to C infect the conjunctiva causing a trachoma. And D and K infect the genitory urinary system. Other species infect the lung causing pneumonia. And there is a lymphogranuloma venereum strain in your L1 to L2 causing rectal infection. Sign and symptom. How the patient with chlamydia presented to you? As we mentioned, asymptomatic with greater mental effect on the tubal function. For example, you may see completely blocked both tube. The tear mental effect. Vaginal discharge, mucopurulent cervical discharge. You, if you face it one time, you never forget it because it is very specific to the chlamydia. Postcoital bleeding and intermenstrual bleeding. Dysuria, urethral discharge and lower abdominal pain. How you are going to diagnose is chlamydia. Endocervical swab and urethral swab and urine for polymerase chain reaction. Nucleic acid amplification technique. Culture. What is the treatment? As we know, the drugs of choice. What is the drugs of choice? First of all, to have rectal your patient, avoid sexual intercourse. The partner should be treated. Test of EQ should be done six weeks after treatment. A drugs treatment, doxycycline. Doxycycline, 100 milligram orally, twice a day for seven days. Azithromycin, one gram orally, single dose recommended in a pregnancy, because doxycycline is contraindication in a pregnancy. All of locks are seen for 100 milligram once a day for seven days. What is the complication of chlamydial infection? The ID, the hepatitis, tubal infertility, and risk of ectopic pregnancy. Writer syndromes, arthritis, urethritis, and conjunctivitis. Implication in pregnancy. If the patient is pregnant and she gets chlamydia, what could be occur to her? Pre Premature rupture of membrane and the preterm labor, low birth weight, low birth weight, postpartum endometritis, and the neonate may get conjunctivitis. Neonatal pneumonia, neonatal pneumonia. Now we talk about chlamydia, now we have to talk about gonorrhea. Gonorrhea, it is a sexually transmitted disorder caused by gram negative. Intracellular diplococcus, Neisseria gonorrhea. It is affecting mucous membrane and the columnar epithelium in the endocervical and urethral mucosa. And it is also affecting the rectal and oropharyngeal mucosa. What is the sign and symptom? How are the patient with gonorrhea presented to you? Asymptomatic or a greenish vaginal discharge, while in chlamydia we say mucopurulent. Pain, mucopurulent endocervical discharge, contact bleeding. Dysuria, mucopurulent urethral discharge, proctitis, rectal bleeding, discharge, and pain. How we are going to diagnose gonorrhea? A triple swab from endocervix, from the urethra, from the rectum, for gram stain and culture, also you can take pharyngeal swab. NAHT and NAHT. Nucleic acid amplification technique. Treatment. Sifta triaxone, 250 milligram IM single dose. Alternative. Sifixime, 400 milligram oral dose. Spectinomycin, 2 gram IM single dose. Complication. Can cause BID. Can cause Bartholin FCs and skin FCs. Disseminated gonorrhea, which cause fever, muscular rash, majority, uh, ma uh, migratory polyarthralgia, and septic arthritis. Tubal infertility, risk of ectopic pregnancy. What is implication in pregnancy gonorrhea can cause? Rome and vitreal labor, chorio amenuritis. Postpartum endometritis of Falmia unetron. And this diagram shows to you the histopathology for infection. Chronic infection can blunt the villi. 
and inflammation clearly shown affecting the fallopian tube and histology of the healthy fallopian tube. This is what we call it the Cotton's half syndrome. Look or notice the adhesion between the liver and anterior abdominal wall by the laparoscopic view. And this is type of hydrocelvix. And this is a biocelvix in which there is bus inside the tube. And this is show you bilateral hydrocelvix. And thank you very much.